Hey everyone, welcome back to Cape and Chasm. My name is Evan, and today I will be doing my Q&A video. Sam posted hers about a month ago, which means that I am very late, and I do apologize. I got very busy once I got home. I was uh, applying for jobs, and I finally got one. Thank you. And yeah, so I do want to do a few questions. Now, I will say, this is my fourth time filming this video. Uh, the three other times, there were too many editing issues, there were posting issues. There was one time where the audio and the video weren't matching up. So, I'm using uh, my phone this time and I'm gonna try to film on that for the most part, I think. If I can figure out the editing and everything, I might try to do it again on my laptop. But yeah, so today I will be doing 10 questions about me and I will let you know what my answers are. Now, uh, Sam did 50 and I know that hers was about 18 minutes long. Uh, I tried to do 50 and 45 and 20 and they all ended up being over 30 minutes because I can talk. I like talking, I like talking about myself. Um, so yeah, I decided to do 10 questions instead of 50. Uh, hopefully these are somewhat enjoyable and yeah, I'm really excited to answer these. So, and if I look down, I'm looking at my iPad which has the questions. So, number one, what's my zodiac? Uh, just like Sam, I am a Libra. I know a lot of people who are Libras. I think I have a total of, including Sam, like six or seven people who are Libras. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that until uh, Sam did her video and she said that she was a Libra and I was like, wow, I also know a lot of Libras. Yeah. And uh, second question is what my favorite Pokemon is. Now, if you know me, you know my favorite Pokemon is Togepi. I this little guy right here. He's been my favorite Pokemon for about like, at least 10 years. Uh, I think he's super cool, super cute. I also have, if I can find it, a little plushie of him. And on my backpack, I have uh, some pins of his evolutionary family. So there's Togepi. There's Togetic under the flap right there. And then on top, I have Togekiss. I also have Mew and Hatias. So yeah, huge fan of Pokemon. Uh, third question, what would be my superpower? Now, again, if you know me, you know I love superheroes, I love superpowers. Uh, I'm kind of drawing up and creating a universe of my own that includes superpowers and other abilities. Um, and my power would be light manipulation. Now, uh, these comes from like five different points of inspiration, um, most of them being like from the Dazzler from X-Men, uh, the Invisible Woman from Fantastic Four, uh, Violet Parr from The Incredibles, uh, Jubilee also from X-Men. I, I love the power of light, it's super cool, super interesting. Um, and in my head I've tried to like get a scientific basis for those powers, it's a little tricky because I think sometimes I think about it too much and in fantasy you either kind of have to explain it properly, like exactly to where it actually makes sense or just throw it out the window and just make it completely magical and, you know. So I have a hard time balancing that. But yeah, light manipulation, I think that, I don't know, I'm a very showy person and I like to be colorful in general. Uh, most of my clothes are bright, I dye my hair a lot. Hopefully I get to do that soon so I can show you guys. Um, so yeah, so with my light manipulation powers, I could create flashes of light, uh, I can turn invisible, uh, somehow by manipulating the photons around me. I've watched a few theory videos on how that works. There's um, there's some that say like you're m manipulating the photons to move through you or uh, creating an image behind you of whatever is in front of you. There's a, a bunch of different theories and I think I think that's super cool. What else can I do with light? Uh, lasers, I think that's kind of along that line. Um, and the character that I'm writing for based on myself with light powers, I think that would come a lot later because these are very like condensed and like streamlined ray of light. Um, I think that would take a lot more concentration. Uh, I digress, but light manipulation. Yeah, super cool. Um, the invis invisibility part specifically came from uh, Violet from Incredibles and Invisible Woman. Uh, I've always loved the power of invisibility. I think it's awesome. I think everyone does. It's great. Uh, and I kind of wanted to interact that with uh, the power of light, which is kind of cool because the power of light usually creates flashes. It's very showy, and you know, you're making an appearance while with invisibility. 
uh, you're disappearing. So I like the duality with that superpower. I, I think it's so cool. Uh, what is my fashion like? That's the next question. Uh, it's kind of similar to Sam. I don't have like a set fashion if I want to give it a name. Uh, I wear a lot of black, I wear a lot of red, um, a lot of flannel, a lot of pink more recently. I think because now that I'm home in sunny California, I can wear more shorts and I have a, a lot of shorts that are pink. Uh, when I'm not wearing shorts, or even sometimes when I am, uh, combat boots. Combat boots are my favorite kind of foot covering. I don't know, I think I started wearing boots in like junior year of high school, which was like six years ago. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's probably my favorite piece of apparel that I could wear. Uh, super, you know, useful. They tend to be comfortable, I think. They're versatile. Uh, yeah, I like them. And I have about three pairs of combat boots that I like to alternate. Uh, when I'm not wearing combat boots, I'm either wearing just like straight sneakers or Converse or um, like running shoes if I'm working out. Da -da -da. Oh, so the fifth question, uh, what did you study in college? I studied neuroscience and biochemistry and it sounds a lot more fancy than what it actually is. Now, not to downplay my education, but I think there's some kind of assumption when I tell people, like, oh, yeah, I studied the, you know, the study of brains and thoughts and, well, more so brains, but, and, you know, the internal workings of the body. And I loved studying those things. I really enjoyed it. I just think that when I tell people, especially meeting them for the first time, they automatically seem like I'm some genius. And you know, I do admit, I would like to think of myself as intelligent, I just, I don't know. I think there's an over-exaggeration of uh, what those words mean. Um, and unfortunately, especially because I went to a liberal arts school in Illinois, uh, like my friends who were creative writing majors or artists or theater majors, their majors are a lot more downplayed because they don't or a lot of people don't see it as this career-driven uh, area of study. So, yeah, not related to the question at all, but that's something that I like to bring up a lot because it's kind of a strong thought of mine that I really believe in. It's just like, you can't really judge someone's area of study. Um, like if it, just because it's not a science, it's, it doesn't mean it's not gonna get them a job or that it's not gonna be useful and vice versa, you know? But yeah, I studied neuroscience and biochemistry in college. Uh, number six, what is your role in your friend group? Uh, I think in most of my friend groups, I would like to think of myself as like, the loud and funny one or the one that will do or say that other won't, others won't in the group. Um, I don't know. I mean, like Sam knows, I'm especially compared to uh, other people in our group, our friend group college I'm a lot more loud and a lot more expressive and straightforward and blunt at times um, which can come up as I hope it doesn't come up this way all the time but I think it can come up as rude and I hope that it's not like that always but yeah uh, in my friend group here at home in California I also think it's a very similar role where I'm kind of the, the free-spirited and the chaotic one uh, and this is connected to the next question which is, what is your role in your family? Because my role in my family is very much the opposite. Uh, I think, especially growing up in my teen years, I felt uh, a little bit, uh, what's the word, not outcast, but like separated from like, my family roles uh, because I was a lot more quiet. I was, not to blow my own horn, but like, the more studious one, so uh, with, in my family, like I was the one who read all the time or drew all the time or, you know, didn't want to be around like big groups of people and parties or, you know. So I think uh, because of that, there was that basis being created in my family and people assuming that I'm the quiet one. Whereas with my friends, I'm a lot more loud and expressive. So I think that comes from just my family and my parents especially being uh, really loud and funny people. And I think uh, I just downgraded because I'm so used to being that kind of person with my friends. So in my family, I'm a little bit more uh, downplayed. Yeah. Uh, oh, and th that's also the reason why I uh, really like Violet Parr from The Incredibles. She was, I don't know, I just really identified with her when that movie came out, even though I was like, how many years ago was it, 15? So I would have been like seven-ish, eight, no, seven, six. I don't know, even at the time, um, I just felt a lot more introverted and downplayed and wanted to be more time alone. 
So yeah, that's where that came from and that was my family role. Um, yeah, so very different and I don't know, it, they, I don't want to say they're very separate personalities because they do depend on who I'm around, but yeah, I'm not just one dimensional and I like people to know that. Uh, next question, when are you most happy? And I like that question because I actually had to think about this. I didn't have it, like uh, for uh, the other questions, I immediately had an answer or, you know, I didn't take that long to realize it. And this one I really had to because I, I think being happy is, isn't fleeting per se for a lot of people that I know. I just think it's hard to define a single moment that you are happy. Um, a few things that I find myself being truly happy is like the, the, like the time knowing that I'm gonna spend time with my friends in the future and in the moment too when I'm spending time with my friends, but knowing that like, oh yeah, I could be at work or having a bad day or, you know, just not feeling great overall, but I get to see my friends soon and that always makes me happy. Um, and again, like, I don't necessarily like to be in big groups or be around people like for hours on end, but there are a few select people that I like to be around all the time and if I could, I would, and those are my friends. Uh, on like the opposite side of the spectrum, I love also knowing that there's gonna be a time where I just have to myself, whether I'll be just in bed reading or watching Netflix, or if I have time set apart where I can just create things. And um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I am a huge fan of cosplay and I cosplay myself. I love drawing up designs. Um, I love comic books, video games. And a lot of my inspiration comes from that and the characters that I do cosplay are also from those things. So if I ever get the chance to just say, okay, today I have the day off or I have a few hours that I can just work and create, I will put it towards that. And that is when I'm truly happy. Um, I think on kind of a, like a lesser note, when I'm in the shower singing, especially if no one's home and I can just sing as loud as I can, sing whatever I want, I think it's very freeing. Um, I love to sing. I'm not a trained singer, um, but I don't know. I, I think it's a, just a great form of expression, and I hope that everyone gets the chance to sing in the shower. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so those are a few things that really make me happy. Uh, number nine. What is something that you are insecure about? I also like this question because I also had to think about this a little bit. Um, I think overall, as an adult, uh, I have gotten a lot better with this, but I had a lot of trouble with confidence. Uh, just like a lot of people, and a lot of people that I know in my life had some confidence issues, whether it was based on appearance, on background, on whatever. I. I specifically struggled in my teen years with my weight and my appearance, and I once I got to college, I slowly started to let that go. That's not to say that I didn't have any confidence issues in college, but especially towards the end when I was starting to realize who was important to me and how those who are important to me and those who love me should not make me feel lesser because of my, my looks. And when I started realizing that the people around me didn't do that, didn't make me feel insecure, that instead made me feel happy and loved the way I look, that's when I finally realized, okay, this is what I need to do, and this is what I need to live by. So, that's again, that's not to say that I even now currently don't have insecurities. I still do, I think everyone does, and that's okay. But, um, yeah, I think uh, insecurity overall about appearance is still very prevalent in my life, even though it is improving. Um, yeah, especially with like dating and like, you know, the whole, you know, are they gonna like me uh, when they meet me? Because I, I do use dating apps and just the whole ritual of going out and, you know, I think now that I've graduated, I'm kind of being more of an adult on my own and finding who I am. I've just let that go. And this goes with friends too, platonic and not platonic and romantic and whatever. If anyone like makes you feel good about yourself and you feel good about them in your life, like that's what you need. So to wrap it all around to the question, uh, something that I'm insecure about and that I have been insecure about is my appearance, but I will say that it is getting a lot better and that I'm getting a lot more comfortable with my skin. All right, last question and something that I really like to tell people or at least talk about in general 
is uh, what valuable lessons have you learned from recently? And kind of going along with uh, people making you feel good about yourself and you enjoying people in your life. Something that I've learned, I think, explicitly, I was talking to my mother about this, who I'm very close to, and uh, just with recent experiences, you don't have to be friends with everyone. You don't have to like everyone, and not everyone has to like you, and that's okay. You shouldn't feel pressure just because you see someone every day or because you've known someone for a long, long time. You don't have to continue that friendship or continue that relationship because if it makes you not happy or insecure or angry or uncomfortable in any way, you don't have to keep that up. And I think that not just me, but a lot of people have that issue because I think they're so used to it. Like, oh, I've known this person for 10 years, 15 years, whatever. I can't just let them go. When in reality, I believe that if they're genuinely causing you distress or even like when you, whenever you're with them, you just feel like just weighed down and gross and it's very toxic. You don't have to be in a relationship with that person. Again, whether it's a friend or a romantic partner or whatever. And I recently tried to live by it and I will say it's hard. Um, you, I've known people for a very long time and just recently thought about it and I didn't like the relationship or how it was going. And it's hard to kind of separate yourself from that and you know, realizing that it is what is needed sometimes, that you have to just let people go. And it's okay. It, it, it isn't even necessarily in malice. It's just, you know, you grow apart or there's just a disconnect and that's fine. But overall, you kind of have to watch out for yourself and that's maybe selfish to some people, but you gotta have to, you have to watch out for yourself because no one else will. And on that note, uh, hopefully that was not as much of a downer as it sounds, but yeah, those are some 10 questions about myself that I wanted to talk about that no one asked, but I answered anyway. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. And Sam, hi, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I am going to Anime Expo this Sunday in Tuesday, Tuesday, like five days. Uh, yeah, and I'm getting Sam some stuff from one of her favorite artists, Rachel. Don't know her last name, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna show you guys some, hopefully some vlogs from AX. And uh, Sam uh, recently, recently by like three weeks ago, uh, went to Disneyland and I hope she has some stuff to share from that. And yeah, so thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye Sam.